Fizz and Yasuo are targeted at Korn more so than any other player in the entire LPL. Also, uh, Insect is the second most banned on their team yeah. with both Rengar and Lee Sin. So we'll see what the second ban is. It's probably going to either go to Korn or to Insect here. And the thing about Insect is once you ban Lee Sin and Rengar, or at least you remove them from him, mm -hmm. he falls back to like Java and maybe a Kha'Zix here. But he's not as good as he is on like Lee Sin and Rengar, where he can really set up the fights because he's an, again, he's a. Action first, think later, jungler, as Monte Cristo pointed out here. He wants to be the guy who starts the fight here, and the team better follow. I think that one reason this Rengar is such a good ban against is Insect is because when you pop Rengar's ult and you get that infrared vision, it actually gives him more information on when not to go in, and he actually gets a warning system there. But so does it stop him? Does it actually <laughs> stop him? Not every single time. So we see the Rengar banned away, but no Lee Sin ban there. And actually, Insect deciding this time around okay. that he's going to go for Kha'Zix. They also took out Rise there, uh, did Royal Club. On the other side, it was a first pick Lucian actually coming out for BB. So this is pretty funny because Rise is normally not, not a very uh, used pick by Royal Club here. We have seen it a few times in mid lane. Cola didn't actually play it in top lane before right now, if it's going to go for him in the top lane. So really mixing up the things here, also Kha'Zix for Insect instead of the Lee Sin. Yeah, I think that is going to be another mid lane rise here for Korn. He has done that a lot recently. But really, I want to go back to the first round pick from Taipei Assassins. They steal away Uzi's favorite champion, the Lucian. They said that they were very scared of him. They're probably going to target him. They already did it right in the first round of picks. And it's really been like his most play champion because Lucian is such a good pick in China where there's a lot of early mid game action and of course Lucian shines in the laning phase, a strong laning phase, great mid game as Ooh. well and you can be really really aggressive here so smart choice but taking it away from Uzi. I still want a little bit about this Lee Sin. I really want to see what Insect can do on Kha'Zix. Well, Lee Sin for wins, but want to touch on that Janna pick because we've been he hearing a lot that Janna is going to be a big big pick in the World Championships this year. So, Janna, she gives the move speed from her passive still, but it is restricted to 1,000 range. So that really is helpful when you're going around warding with somebody like Lee Sin. That very important jungle and support synergy will be there. So the big deal for me with Janna is you want to have disengaged when you play against a team like Royal Club because they want to fight. They want to be aggressive. They want to force you into bad situations where you have to react instantly. When you have Janna, you can ulti, you can reset the whole fight here and then you can back away and you can choose when you actually want to go in if you want to team fight here. So I really like disengage against Royal Club. Plus, we can also look to see if they take a page out of Shield's book and go with the early Bloodthirster for Lucian to do the uh, Shield stacking with that Janna-Lucian combo. Very interesting pickup. On the other side, we actually saw Orianna locked in here for Korn. That's by far and away his most played champion this year. 16 games played and it has a 12 and 4 record. And while we're on Royal Club side there, Nami also locked in. Big strong picks coming out for Royal Club. Yeah, and Zero has really been a great support for Royal Club. I mean, obviously he was he's from Korea, transferred over with Insect as well, and he's just been performing so well with Uzi down this bottom lane. And Nami is he's one of the few supports also in China who actually likes to play Nami, who likes to play the disengage style. So I really like the pick. Also, if Royal Club gets a 2v2 lane here, because you have Nami into Janna, it's going to be great for Royal Club. So they're gonna look for standard lanes. You also want to have your rise against Dr. Moon up in the top lane here. So I expect Royal Club to go in level one, try and get some uh, some wards down spot where TPA is going and make sure to get standard lanes. They have great lanes all around and actually a very, very team fight focused comp here. Not as early aggressive stylish so as we sometimes see from Royal Club, but definitely around the mid lane, also the jungle pick where Insect won't be able to start the fights himself, but now he can get the ball on at least from Orianna and then he can go in. And speaking of Orianna, we can also talk about Syndra there locked in as well for Taipei Assassins. What do we think to that one? Yeah, it is going to be an interesting pick there for Morning because it is a little bit out of character, you yep. know. Yeah. Um, he'll have a lot more kill potential than we're used to seeing from him. Well, guys, as these two teams prepare to go head to head, we'd like you to turn to Twitter and let us know who you think will win this match. Tweet us using the hashtag TPAWIN or SHRWIN to at LOL Esports and we'll figure <laughs> out exactly how you think that one's going to go down. 50 50 was the LOL Esports.com vote. Do we agree with a 50 50 here? I would put Royal as their favorite, but I really feel like TPA is a strong team and they 
I mean, we're playing here in Taipei. If they want to beat Royal Club, or if they can't beat Royal Club, they can take number one in the group because Royal Club TSM, I'm not sure who's the strongest. We're going to see later on. If they can beat one of them, one of both. Well, we are about to get into the game then. Both Royal Club and the Taipei Assassins going to show us exactly what they've got coming into their first match of the 2014 World Championships. TPA, of course, starting out here on the blue side. And we heard it earlier, a possible sixth member of the team being on home soil. So again here, looking at the combo over on TPA's side, you do have Illusion, Jenna, that's great for Siege and Towers here, great for at least killing them once you get close enough, where Orianna can be a bit annoying for Lucian with the range nerfs down to 500 now, so it's a bit harder for him to siege up towers. But you do have the Syndra, extra range, you have the backup stun as well, you have the disengage potential for her. So TBA can look to try and fast push from towers here, but there's a lot of wave clan on the side of Royal Club, so they should be able to keep them away. So we talked a little bit about the bottom lane matchup, but one thing we didn't talk about at all is the fact that Uzi decided to go with Caitlyn this time around. A champion that he actually this year has a 100% win record on. Only three games played though, what do we think to Caitlyn? Yeah, so the last time that they used Caitlyn, it was in combination with the Janna for the early pushing yep. of the turrets, which worked really well against OMG. Uh, but this time around, with the Nami and being matched up against Lucian, uh, we'll see how he can take advantage of the extra range for Caitlyn in this laning matchup. If they do stay down there in the 2v2s, uh, then Uzi can actually use that to get a big upper hand onto Lucian. With Lucian being changed down to a 500 range AD carry, we'll see about that. This deep ward, though, looks yeah. like TPA won't fall into that trap. Instantly, you just see... Mundu move down to this bottom lane here because TPA, they want to make sure they get the lane swap. So nice little ward down in the lane to see if anyone from World Cup was standing and waiting. Of course, Uzi was down in the bottom lane, decided to get a few hits on Jay as well to really show TPA, yes, I am here. You can swap your Mundo down, you can get your 1v2. So we are going to see the lane swap. Does mean TPA will give up the dragon control, but it's all about just dodging around this bottom lane here. And they're going to get free reign on that one. We can see that Archie actually sticking with wins from the start of this one. Obviously, would have a tough time if he was to go down to that 2v1. Cola doing pretty much exactly the same here as he follows Insect on that red buff start. This mid lane going to be a big one to watch. As we said, Morning, not the type of player that usually goes for these very aggressive mid laners. He prefers generally those more utility, supporty type mid laners. Well, that mid lane will be isolated more so than usual. They just really have to watch out for the roaming uh, double ganks there and maybe even three-man ganks when the supports come. But really, I want to point out the difference in style in the lane swap here. Uh, Starhorn Royal Club, they're quickly shoving down bottom. They waste no time. Whereas TPA are trying to freeze up top. And this is really the two mentalities of these two AD carries. BB likes to farm up for the late game. Yep. Uzi always likes to get the action going very early. So we'll see if Starhorn Royal Club knocking down an early turret, if they can take advantage of the extra map movements they'll be able to make. And what should happen here is actually TPA should make sure that Archie down this bottom lane or send him down to this bottom lane so he can start picking up some farm. Because when you fast push in a lane swap, you will never build up a big wave. It means it's harder to dive, and at the same time, you can zone away and deny CS from a top lane because you will constantly push it in. So I really feel like TBA should have sent both Archie and Wins down towards what? this bottom lane. Corn zone is so oh, low in This could oh, be really, risky. really bad for him, actually. Getting caught out here, has to flash back towards his touch. He's dead. He's still going in. He can go down as well. And it's first blood for the Taipei Assassin. So the first rule of lane swapping is that you do not go to the side of the map where your opponents have the duo lane. Honestly, I think Korn was like expecting Archie to be down towards this bottom lane. I didn't expect him to be in the top side. So he just walked straight in. Didn't even place the ward beforehand. He also picked up the sweep before him, but he walked straight into two people. And funny enough, I've actually seen him do this before, where he will place his ward, at least walk to the wrong side in a lane swap and be caught by surprise, end up dying. There's a TP actually coming down into right, his bottom lane. So Archie will come down, get himself some farm. We'll also have the backup of Jay. Funnily enough, we also see Wins moving in, but Royal Club are actually moving down there as well. They're going to come around the backside, and if you look at the minimap, not actually spotted by any wards at this point. Wins just there doing his golems, but it looks like Royal Club are actually just going to loop around. That's a de decent little bubble over the top of the wall from Zero, but we'll see what Archie can get here in terms of farm. Is ahead of Rise at this point. 
as Wins start to move himself in, we'll finally get vision of them. So we do actually see TPA sending down Archie to this bottom lane. Make sure we can pick up some farm. It's much smaller. Be bad for TPA because four members from Royal Club moving out to respond. They want to kill the tower first and then go for the kills. Well, they're going to have to back away here, TPA. Four men from Royal Club will make sure that the first turret of this game, maybe on the next wave at this point, will be going down. Archie and Jay have decided to actually stick around from this one, try and soak up that little bit of extra XP as it comes on through. But that turret is going to be going down, and Royal Club will pick up the first one of the game here just over five minutes in. Importantly, TPA do have a ward in the back of this Dragon Pit, so they'll see this start off, but Lee Sin is way too far away. They cannot contest this. Maybe if they had people in position and Wins was They're there, moving. they could run him off, but they're doing it really quickly here. They have to get there now. Morning is level five. He doesn't have ulti yet, but just by showing himself placing the pink ward, Royal Club knows they're taking too much damage from the Dragon here. They just have to back away, so it pays off for Wins. He went into the Wolf camp a little bit greedy, not staying around this bottom side of the map in case the Dragon was started. But TPA got it under control here. They have the first plot, lost the bottom tower though, and not looking to push the top one because BB, he's already gone. He want to go back down to this bottom lane and pick up some farm. Yeah, it was good early warding by TPA. That ward in the back of the Dragon pick definitely paid off for them, and they were able to stop the dragon from going down. But really, it is going to be about that bottom turret being down. How can uh, Starhorn increase their control on this red side jungle? So normally when we see Insect playing like Lee Sin and Rengar, he loves to focus the bottom lane and get Uzi ahead. And now when you, when you have a lane where the tower is already gone, it would open up if we go like 10 minutes into the game now for Uzi, oh sorry, for Insect to come down to this bottom lane, try and catch them in the middle of the lane and get a few kills. He won't really be able to do the same on the Class X and might look like to sit and farm a bit more now so he can become very strong in these team fights. Because right up from the start, because we had the lane swap, not been able to have the same early game pressure as we sometimes see in the LPL. And if Royal Club do not move Uzi to another one of these outer turret lanes, they then they're going to have to spend a lot of money warding up down here because it would be very dangerous for them to return. Right now, headed up top though, to try and punish the early Mundo. Not much that Mundo can do. He has very little wave clear. Archie's still level four in there as well. Caller just hitting level five, as does Uzi with that minion going down. So Archie going to be forced to retreat back onto his tower. Nami's actually headed up towards that top side as well, which might mean that Archie has to completely back away or risk being dofia. But this is exactly what Royal Club did last time they played Caitlyn. It was against OMG. They killed the bottom tower, they fast push it in the lane swap, and instantly Uzi just swaps to top lane. Zero joins in, they take the next tower. And then it's all about the mid lane, because they want to get all these auto turrets down so they can start putting in some deep wards and spotting out where TPA is moving, and then they can start looking for some picks. TPA trying to answer back though, BB makes the call to shove in bottom lane so that they can then try and gain control of this Dragon Pit. So many resources spent top for Royal Club, three people up there. TPA does a good job of recognizing this, takes advantage of the other side of the map, trades global gold, they're staying calm, and they've got the lead now. Yeah, so they got the Dragon here, smart move, but Royal Club actually, actually doesn't care. They just want the towers down as fast as possible. It's the reason they picked this Caitlyn here for the early pressure on towers. They're already pushing down now here. Archie's left alone, 2v1. They might be able to get a bit of damage on the tower because Wins is running from base now. Moving back into that one, we do have a few wards down, but funnily enough, Royal Club are actually deeper than the line of wards that have been put down there by the Taipei Assassins. And we can see with that blue buff spawn, it's already been started here by Uzi and Zero. We do have Morning and Archie coming around the side. Stun won't quite connect onto the oh, champion. Get it. Nope. Blue buff is very low and it does go over yep. to Morning. So successful defense of that buff. They did defend the buff, but now it's going to be a move from Royal Club to the mid lane, the last outer turret standing. They will continue with this sort of full court press style that they're known for. They continually keep up the pressure, and that's why we don't see a lot of rise from them. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of time to ramp up before they start forcing these fights. We'll see if they actually have Cola join the team, 
pretty much they're going to try and maneuver him on the side lanes now while it's a four-man early shove, and then just try and have Ryze soak up side lane experience, making use of that teleport to go uh, from bottom to top, wherever the big minion waves are. And we often see with Royal Club, Cola, he's the guy who's split push. Like, he loves to play Jax, he loves to play Aurelia, where he can actually split push and take down towers by himself. Ryze, he's going to be fairly strong in one-on-one, -on -one, but he's not exactly the guy who walks up and kills the towers here. So it's going to be all about him getting a lot of farm in the side lanes, and then he joins in for these team fights here. We might see him TP behind and try and flank around. Yeah, it's a good adaptation to, to incorporate Ryze into this comp because he's not going to be able to split push. Ryze doesn't take turrets down well, but he does soak up side lane farm very well. And he well. loves it, man. Yeah, yeah. Ryze to late game, man. He <laughs> will be an absolute monster. Insect down this bottom lane. It's not spotted by any wards, and this is what I talked about just before. Insect, he loves to come down to this bottom lane, especially when the tower is gone, and just look for kills here. Possibly a counter gank, Winter's already gone. It's going to be about the bubble here, though, and if we look at the AD carry items, there's a BF sword difference, despite the fact that BB is ahead in CS, and we can see them now actually recalling from that one, realizing that he can't really match up to the power there of Uzi, especially if a bubble were to land, and Zero must be close to hitting that level 6 point as well, where his tidal wave would come into effect. Mid lane, Stayed a little bit quiet these last few moments, but it's Morning that's got a big advantage. He's head headed up towards his top lane now. Ryze already starting to back away. This is the danger if you're trying to soak up on the, all these side lanes with a squishy early game Ryze. He's very, very diveable. They make the call to back off, though, because there's a lot of pressure headed mid here. Starnhold oh. Royal Club looking to group oh. up. Mr. Bingo here, they are pinging eggs, so they want to kill. But they also need to get into this mid lane. Notice how... Uzi and Zero know they can't go mid lane as long as Morning is there to wave clear. To see a small fight, oh. never mind. But as long as Morning is in the mid lane, he can sit there and wave clear, which means Uzi couldn't really fast push the tower after he took down the top one. But as soon as Morning moved from this mid lane, Uzi ran in there, he'd already shoved up bottom lane, and he wanted to see if he can get some damage on the tower. Pretty much identical build between the AD carries and the mid laners at this point. Look at Both of them going up towards the Athenes. Are they going to be able to get into this one? And in the end, Cole are actually deciding against it. Yeah, he, that's really going to cost them since they were trying to have him uh, sort of play the defense here. Looks like that move down there from Korn to soak up and stop the push from BB is going to buy them some time, but they have stalled it out a little bit here. It was a bit of an aggressive move though. Cole actually wanted to teleport down, try and gank BB to kill him because a lot of TBA's play style is built around BB. Like he's the shot caller, he's the captain, and he's often the guy they look to, uh, like the guy they want to have to carry the late game. Lucian won't be a, a hyper carry like we normally see, like Tristan is a big pick for BB here. Still a great late game carry, and uh, we'll continue to look for him to do well, get him to team fights where he can start carrying, and also why we saw Roy Club thinking about shutting him down or trying to shut him down. TPA just trying to set up a bit of a trap there. They know that both Uzi and Zero were hanging around this middle lane, but actually Zero had already caught, uh, recalled and was on his way back out of the base, so nothing really open to them. We do have a Dragon coming up in one and a half minutes' time. Up until now, it's TPA that have got the wards down around that area of the map. We'll see if that continues, though, as two men go down bottom there for Royal Club. I mean, it looks like we're going to be seeing that 2v2 once again in action. His intake here going to get the slow. Actually, flashes in there for the extra damage, and Archie is not going to be able to get away from this one. It's intake that picks up a kill. Nice little setup here. There was a ping ward from Royal Club in the bush, so he could move at least close enough before he got spotted by the ward, and he was too late for Archie up in his top lane to react. End up dying. He will respawn before the dragon. He does have teleport ready as well. Down his bottom lane, who's taking a lot of damage from BP. BP not scared there to get his hands dirty, and that may just free up a lot of damage on towards this tower. There is the culling coming out, that'll get rid of pretty much half a minion wave. Well, it looks like Royal Club have done enough to keep them back, at least for now. And notice the level difference here between BB and Uzi. It's simply because Uzi has been pushing these towers with multiple members from his team, where BB, he was just in the top lane alone, freezing it, getting a lot of experience here. So he's ahead, he's doing a lot of damage now. It's going to be very important for this potential dragon fight. Well, tower's going down. I'm not sure the Royal Club should have stuck around for this one. Uzi, the focus, exhaust goes down. He flashes over the wall. BB is going to dash oh, it to kill. Kill. after a tank will do it. But Insane comes around. Monsoon is running. Bubble comes down. Is Insane going to be able to get away? There's the knock -up. A Oh, shut up, oh, oh no. down as well. Corn now at less than half. Zero, Cola, Bumble at the Incredible! What a 
huge swing for DPA. That turret going down and BB following up. The level advantage pays out big. They're able to get the kills. Snowball and just several pickups. That's not only going to be the turret, it's going to be the dragon. Big, big boost here for TPA. Giant mid-game power spike. Beautiful play there. And just notice how every single member from TPA rushed to this bottom lane. Let's just see it again. Your tower goes down. Shield already from Jay onto BB. Doing a lot of damage to him. Notice that. Level 10 to level 8. Uchi flashes. It's not enough. BB can chase, finish him. Now the important part. The first ulti from Jay actually missed Intake, so he won't get to knock him away. But he's just healing BB and trying to make sure he can stay alive. Corn flashed for that oh. Sombrero ult app, by the way, well. That was well. Intake. So Insect, they're able to get a kill here while watching the replay, but man, the missed Shockwave from Corn there really hurt them. Morning came in and he barely missed that Sinter Stun, but that didn't hurt them nearly as much as the missed Shockwave. I have to say, too, that was some fairly greedy play by Uzi, sticking around the turret that was only a couple hits left from going down. And we were talking before the World Championship started, the great thing about watching these Chinese teams that from what sometimes seems like a 2v2, all of a sudden becomes a 5 versus 5 as they get into the action so quickly. But TPA really matching them here on that one, coming out big and now lead this game close to a 3,000 gold lead, 5-4 up in kills. Behind slightly here in turrets, they've got a 4-0 on wins here on Lee Sin, showing against the opposite number, Insek, who famed, of course, for that Lee Sin play, that he can certainly bring this one out. Big morning getting himself another blue buff there as well. And really what we are seeing is the whole plan from TPA coming to fruition finally here. One of the reasons why people stopped fast pushing the turrets down was because of the option to freeze the other side lane. And TPA did that. They sat on all of the extra experience and gold that they were going to feed into BB and then finally brought it down to the bottom lane for the second dragon. And the fact TPA has Syndra sitting in the mid lane to wave clear is simply meant that the whole idea from Royal Club with like taking down all the outer turrets as fast as possible it failed because they couldn't push the mid lane. Morning was sitting there, he could just constant wave clear it. He played it very safe in the laning phase. If he had died just once, instantly Uzi would have been in mid lane, killed the tower here. He played it really wisely. Kept wave sling. Top lane. Going down. Yeah, quick reaction. See it from TPA. Seeing there was no one top. Seeing the gathering, maybe you could say, of Royal Club in that middle lane. Pushing straight up there. Leveling out the turret score. And as I said before, 4,000 gold is not too far away here for the Taipei Assassins. And looking very, very good. And we heard the crowd after that last oh, fight. Oh, yes. Really getting pumped up here. And that's something that you can never really count out. TPA looking very good in their first game. And I really wonder here what Royal Club is actually thinking about, because normally, once they actually do fall behind, they will keep being very aggressive and like try and fight you, and it will often backfire because they are so far behind. So they're not a really a good team at coming back into games here. And they don't have insight on a playmaking jungler. They don't really have Uzi, at least for now, for the next 15 minutes on Caitlyn where he really needs to stack up items before he gets to the late game and he becomes a hyper carry. He won't be able to go in and solo kill people either. So the two playmakers, Insek and Uzi, are not able to go in alone and start something. Which means TPA, as long as they play safe, stick together as a unit, they will be able to win. Well, I think one of the biggest problems for Starhorn Roller Club here is gonna be Achi towards this late game. He's facing the double solo lane AP from Royal Club already got his Spirit Visage done. He is going to be very, very hard for them to take down. Talking about uh, Insect and Uzi, it's going to be up to them. Oh, stun onto Korn. This tower going to be focused here by TPA, and I don't think the Royal Club can actually hang on to this one. That'll be turret number three. The outer ring is now gone, and you can see instantly with that TPA saying, right, your outer turrets are gone. We're going to oh, take Rise. the jungle as well. Rise also getting... Oh, he got into the brush there, I think, just before they caught sight of him. The wards go down, though, and this is where we'll really see how well TPA can turn this lead yeah. into a possible victory. We know them as a team that sometimes take their time to win games because they do it by the book, and getting the wards down is now the next step for them. And doing it by the book against a team like Royal Club is just a perfect strategy, because again, 
they want to fight. They want to get in your face as much as possible. If you slowly take objectives, then you go to the bottom lane, four members start pushing in that one to take a tower, and you pressure every single lane, because notice Kola here, he will always go to the side lane to try and pick up some farm, which means he's not there to defend right now. He has to teleport in, so it's all about Uzi or Korn to do the wave there, or to wave clear these lanes, which opens up for TBA to fast rotate between lanes. They have full wall control in this top side, or in this bottom side of Royal Club jungle. All that vision does come uh, a large part due to their support, Jay, who is also going to make their tower sieges really, really easy as well. Having that Janna ultimate in your back pocket, uh, just in case there's a bad shockwave, is going to make them be able to get up to the turrets very quickly. You can get a shielded double shot off under the turret and slowly take it down very easily. Plus, they have the support of a Syndra long range stun. One of the best AP champions to have at those tower sieges because she can hit that CC from out of tower turret range very, very safely. I would actually like to see TBA just do what they've been doing for the last like one minute, split up in these lanes here. You have Mundo keeping a rise and check up in the top lane. Syndra sitting in the mid lane with Oriana, and down this bottom lane you do have the dual lanes. And this opens up for wins because the ward control, the vision control is in favor of TPA to then move between the lanes. He can go into mid lane and kick back or pick kick back corn and set up a very easy kill for morning. And suddenly, once you get one kill in either of these lanes, because you split it out Royal Club so much, you will be able to take the tower and break further into Royal Club space. So Dragon has spawned in, TPA superior vision on that side of the enemy jungle and in the river. That is going to be a complete freebie for them. Obviously you can call a freebie, I also say earned from the fact that they had that lead taking down the turrets. That's three out of three Dragons now for the Taipei Assassins and it brings their lead to just over 5,000 gold. 21 minutes into this one. Doing really, really well at this point. The question is, can they turn a lead into a victory against Royal Club? Well, they have sort of turned their sights towards mid, but the ping back onto blue, that would be pretty big for them. They need to get that for Syndra. Adds a whole lot more pressure in a tower siege. You talked about TPA playing some of their leads out slowly, and they have that luxury right now. They do, but... You don't really want to give Caitlyn too much time to just sit and farm, especially because Caitlyn is fairly weak in the mid game and you already had the early advantage. You could keep pushing it there and force Uzi into some team fights, which he didn't want to be in before he got some more items. I mean, you normally say Caitlyn needs like two items before she really starts scaling up to late game. And Uzi's currently sitting on the seal, just upgrade to stack chip. So he has the two items now, he can start scaling to late game. And for now, TPA looking towards the top lane. All the water that in the bottom side of the jungle has ran out. And moving on to. Uh, Yep. They've played it by the book. They moved up their ward line, all of their wards almost in Starhorn Royal Club territory right now. They've claimed both sides of the jungle. Swinging up top here, this undefended secondary turret top. They get a lot of damage down here before any response shows up. Ace in the hole coming through and Royal Club may be looking for the fight here. They're certainly going to force TPA to back away from that turret here for now. But TPA have all got themselves together. They're still not quite landing there. They were looking to pinpoint Uzi, but looks like Royal Club have done enough now to force TPA to back away from it. But how far are they going to go? They still wait here by that tribus. BB just going to go out there, get rid of the ward. But at least for now, no fight going to come in there. And they can continue to play it safe like this. Kite back into the areas where they control the vision. Because look at Starhorn Royal Club's composition here. So hard for them to actually get an initiation. Very dangerous. Against a Mundo tank and a Janna who can reset the fight, you really need a great shockwave to pull this one off. Definitely agree it's going to be hard for or look to actually stop or go kill TPA, but they can keep wavelength. We've just seen for the last five minutes, Rolov has been able to sit in the lanes, wave there. There's barely been any damage from TPA onto the towers here. So Rolov at least buying some time, and it's still funny to see them play like this, where now they're forced to be defensive and sit and just wave there their lanes. When they normally are this team who just go for it and, and dive you and force you into these bad team fights, it's almost like watching European LCS sometimes. <laughs> that's that's definitely something to be said for Rogue Club. They haven't forced an issue in something where they've been behind, you know, since sort of this mid game here. They haven't overextended. They didn't chase TPA there, which would have been disastrous for them if they tried to chase chase that yeah, team into and they couldn't do it enemy with the comp. vision. Like again, this is not a standard Rogue Club comp. This is not one way you force all the fights because your jungler once again you kind of want to sit and farm. You want to get some items, and of course, Caitlyn. You don't go one on one with Caitlyn in the side lane against anyone there. 
That's why you need to pick a Lucian or Vayne. TPAR looking, you know, towards that late game here. Jenna picks up her Medjai's, hoping to accumulate a lot of stacks there. Another bonus for having Mundo on your team is it does open up some duo Barons. Mundo's very good at tanking up the Baron in late game. Maybe if they get a lot of vision control on that red side and they can control that entire pathway, then they could sneak something. Ooh, a lot of damage there onto Insect. In fact, the Ignite oh! taking away. One more would have done it. Insect walks away live just intact. And there is BB actually going in, forcing Cola out of lane. He's now got Jay joining in. Next minion wave is coming up. TPA are going to get some damage onto this turret as Winds will join them as well. The rest of the Royal Club, though, are starting to move around here. Can they hold on to his tower? There is a tidal wave coming through, but it's not able to do what they wanted. It was the Banshees actually on winds that stopped him from being knocked up. But man, Royal Club is not really reacting fast enough here. They'll let BB get a lot of damage on the tower. Onto mid lane now. Notice Uzi, he ran from base to bottom lane, but he was too late. And then you realize, oh, I'm in bottom lane now. They're already gone. They're pushing my mid tower, and he's trying to run into wave clear. So Royal Club here reacting way too slow to these pushes from TPA. And once again, we see another chase here, but there's nothing really they can do to pull the trigger. They don't have a reliable hard engage that they can split the switch here. It would have to be a very dangerous move, like an, an insect jumping in there with invisibility to try and get in position for that shockwave on, onto BB. And that's, even that is pretty easy to spot. I mean, unless he's flanking around you and you have absolutely no wards. But because TPA is pushing up all the lanes, they will have wards in the jungle. So Insect, he can flank around. He has to run straight in their face and then jump with the ball. That is pretty easy to spot. And they're going for a two-man team up once again towards this bottom lane. Again, Royal Club trying to react, but those deeper wards that the Assassins have got down, spot Insect coming in. And there is a Howling Gale going over. He knocks Insect up, but there was no follow-through. TPA here not interested really in overcommitting for the fight. They want the towers, and this one is going to be going down. That's tower number four for the... No, not quite. Doesn't get taken. And Insect Whoa. here off to the side will get the slow. Can he actually get in there Mudan, to start teleport. the fight off? There is the ultimate use and they do have teleport but just ran away. away from them archie in that mid lane he should be able to take down this tower on his way through four men from tpa will push bottom back up here and royal club unable to get in here and make anything happen we've been over it so many times yes. yeah they just don't have the trigger to pull they they kind of have to hope for tpa to slip up here and go too deep under a turret but that's not gonna happen i mean insect tried to actually like flank around him even though he knew they had full vision of him and then he tried to just land it slow and see if he can catch someone. Not gonna happen even the Janna passive to help speed you up and there's gonna be another dragon. So TPA been using a few different tactics now to try and get a tower down. We saw them just before he hit you with the dual lane in the bottom lane, winds running between the two lanes which was what we talked about earlier and then morning hit in the mid lane push it up and they did get a lot of damage because Royal Club are not reacting fast enough to these pushes. They're not expecting, okay, where is TPA going to send their dual lane? Where should Uzi be to wave clear fast enough? And therefore, there's always a lot of tower damage being taken. And with Archie pushing that mid lane, the thing that you expect then, especially out of Royal Club, is for them to say, okay, five men versus four in that bottom lane, kill them off and stop that split push happening. But because of those wards in there, they see them coming every single time, just back off and then push it all the way back in there. TPA now, though, finally actually starting to move a little bit further back on the map. There's a blue buff being picked up for Morning, who now has his Zonya's Hourglass in another needlessly large rod as well. Mundo already super tanky with that Spirit Visage, with now the Randuin's Omen in there as well. This is going to be hard for Royal Club to come back if TPA don't make a mistake. They have defended all of their secondary turrets thus far, though. They have at least been able to hold on to some of their territory. Really what they have to worry about is how are we going to keep TPA from getting complete vision control of our red side jungle and then forcing some sort of action around Baron. TPA can easily take control and then do some baiting. So Uzi was actually doing red buff here and going back to base, but TPA, because they had no idea where he actually was on the map, didn't really feel like they could just push up even though this mid tower is very, very low. I mean, it's a few hits from BB, two hits from him and it's gonna go down here. Same goes for the bottom lane tower. So TPA for now, seems to be looking towards this Baron here, but might just want to set up a few wards. So there's the risk on these Royal. They want Royal to believe there's a chance they can take the Baron and then force them away from their towers, away from the safe lanes, out in the open, and then you can team fight. Right, if you can get that vision line far enough up, then Syndra is one of the best AP champions 
from Fog of War, easily pulling off picks with her long range stun. So, that vision war continues around Baron. We see a ward in the back of the pit from Royal Club. And there is the turret finally in that bottom lane going down. It's once again Archie off on his own, just making sure that he gets those waves pushed up. Getting the fourth turret of the game for the Taipei Assassins. Does their focus now turn over towards this Baron? They've got three men in there. The sweeper's been very, very effective for them. Archie down on the bottom side, getting a bit of clearage of his own. And if you look at the minimap, especially on the top side, he's all blue wards at this point. Yeah, so the defensive pink wards here from TPA, they could actually take them and just move them a bit further up here if they really want to start setting up for a potential Baron. Deny even more vision in the jungle from Royal Club because the two wards you see just around the mid lane, one of them actually just got moved, thank you very much. Second one they have at the mid lane, just push it further up. Royal Club is not looking to push on TPA for the next 10 minutes, they just want to sit back and farm and avoid TPA picking up a Baron or avoid losing their base. So take these pink wards, move them a bit further up here, deny even more vision from Royal Club and force them to react, force them away from their lanes, into the jungle, and then you can land a Sintra stun and then you can kill people. Hmm, they are doing a the greatest job of defending their ward coverage in the red side jungle, though. That every opportunity to force a fight here on the red side jungle, TPA. Uh, but Sarna World Club did get in there. They cleared out a little bit and they got a little bit of safety here. One ward down into Baron, at least. Oh, Jay, that taking a bit of damage. Wind's going to get bold, but no immediate danger yet. BB on the top side there. And once again, the Taipei Assassin saying, you come in and put your wards down, we'll take them straight back out. And to be frank, Zero going to be running out of wards at this point, the amount that he's thrown down the back. There is BB actually up on the top side. Zero coming across. They're going to try and lock him down here. Tidal wave going to be dodged away from the bubble misses. Yeah, was... And BB says, thank you very much. Use your ultimate and get nothing for it. That was and a very desperate play. They also have complete vision control. Here's that uh, two-man Baron we talked about. Uh, with the Mundo and Lee Sin. It doesn't go down fast when you do it that way, though. It goes down very slow. That might be the chance <laughs> that Royal Club need. Jay just basically trying to body block Zero, stop him coming around from it, using those Howling Gales. We do have Insect moving across the side, though. BB is down to less than half I got the, down. the Baron here and that's is going to be spotted. <laughs> TPA just disengage. And might I even reset, like, the entire Baron dance we've just seen here. All the pink walls being placed. If TBA backs away from the Baron pit now, it opens up for Royal Club to go in there, clear all the pink wards, buy some more time. For now, they're looking to this mid lane. Syndra is standing there to wave clear. But yeah, how, you know, what can Royal Club really get out of this? They've got five people on three, defending the turret. They can get a tower. They back it out. Janna's shield goes down very quickly. That turret does fall. That's turret number three for Royal Club. So they themselves now achieve the outer ring. And what will they do from that one, though, as TPA start to get back in? Insect is going to go up towards the Baron, try and get rid of a few of these pink wards. There are three of them around the immediate area of that Baron itself. Cole is up on the top side as well. We do have Uzi there in position as well. So Royal Club here, at least for now, going to clear out some of the vision that TPA had worked so hard for. But with a couple of recalls, they're starting to move in. Shockwave will pull BB in, but there's no follow-up. No, but actually also, like if you look down at the items now, smart play by TPA, they know, or they knew, by backing away from the Baron, they will lose all the pink wards instantly. Three members to support new pink wards, ready to set up for another Baron dance, if they want to move in and do it again. I'm not sure why BB actually did go for Last Whisper, as he's the third item here. He could have gone for Blood Thirst, so there's not a lot of armor on the side of, of Royal Club, giving him a lot more damage. Tower pushing potential here, so Last Whisper wasn't really worth it for him as the third item here. But have delayed it for four. Well, right now Royal Club are actually moving down towards the Dragon. That already spawning into the map. Archie down on the bottom side. Maybe part of the flank around, but no. We see there three-man recall. They're giving this one away. Well, this is that uh, reward for chunking BB in the mid lane there. He, got, he went back to base, and Royal Club, they get another objective here. They're slowly clawing their way back into this game. And this is TPA. This safe sort of style is not paying off for them right now. Every step that you give Starhorn Royal Club back into this game makes it scarier and scarier. They thrive on these Baron fights in the late game. The team fight, you don't want to let them have one of these late game team fights. Uzi now, he's becoming very scary. He's got those Caitlyn items you're looking for. One more damage item on Uzi and he will be able to shred. He's holding right now over 2,000 gold. 
Oh, AC in the hole comes through. You see it takes almost half of BB's health away. And BB pushing out that wave, but it's only going to fall into the hands of Uzi as that one pushes through. We're also seeing more wards going down from TPA using that scrying orb just to check if anyone was waiting as they once again get those deeper wards down. Insect going to be waiting off to the side. who's actually stood on top of that ward as it went down. And that means that TPA once again get control. They've actually got a minion wave. This is the tower going down. Done They've it. done well to actually defend this one. Insect not going to be followed through there. I thought Morning might pull the trigger. Decides against it. Yeah, you can see how risk-averse TPA they are. Even though they get one of those long-range stuns on a squishy target, don't overcommit. They just take the turret. I feel like though TPA needs to decide. Uh -huh. Do we want to go 100% for Baron here? Do we want to take all our pink wards and fully focus on denying all the vision from the Royal Club in this top side of the jungle, start up a Baron, or force a team fight around it? Or should we just have gone back to what worked before, where we push up every single lane because Morning is so strong in the mid lane and because BB was so strong in the bottom lane, they could keep pressure on both the bottom lane and the mid lane at the same time. And it paid off in the start. They got the towers really low. They could have kept doing it, killed those two towers, instead of dancing around the Baron here for the last five minutes where they've basically not been doing anything. And we do get to the point where you have to start thinking about super, super late game. Exactly. Royal Club have way more damage they can bring to the table. That's the whole point. I mean, you're basically buying time, buying time for Royal Club to keep farming up here. They got the last dragon as well. And TPA is not pushing the advantage. And funny enough, when we actually watched the finals between TPA and AHQ, the GPL finals, there were some very, very long games. Even when TPA were far ahead, they would just keep like playing extremely safe, keep picking up objectives here, dancing around the pound a little bit. And AHQ almost came back in the game. We were like 60 minutes in, and there were a lot of gold behind. Royal Club can look to do the same because their late game comp is scary. It is so fantastically strong in team fights. They have Mundo with teleport. They have complete vision control of Baron. They can shove up this lane. They need to create some sort of pressure here. But right now, they've just been wave clearing and wave clearing, picking up uh, the neutral dragons, which, yes, is giving them a nice pot of gold. But slowly but surely, Royal Club come back. Yeah, and even that last dragon going to Royal Club, their first of the game. Let's see if they can continue that trend here. We go back to what we've been seeing for the last 15, 20 minutes almost, which is just the exchange of wards around this barren area. We have the Thorn Mail now done, by the way, for Archie, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for Uzi to crack that shell, but TPA again, showing that they're not scared to kind of step forward in the jungle. They're just not using that positional no. advantage for they anything. They need to be more aggressive. I mean, they need to take Jay, Winds, and Morning, and you just go straight into Royal Club's top side of the jungle, then BB up in his top lane. Nobody can one-on-one -on -one in from the side of Royal Club. He can push in the lane. You saw him just perform this top lane here. He would kill the minions and then he would back away. He wouldn't risk anything because the rest of TPA were just staying just around the bounty. So they weren't Whoa. deep enough to spot if Royal Club were going for a gank here. They need to be more aggressive with the lead they had. They keep starting the Baron. Royal Club can just walk in, ward it. TPA backs away here and they're not getting deep enough with the wards. They're not playing aggressive enough. Oh, Jay gonna be caught out. Insect on top of him. He uses the monsoon as the exhaust was used as well. Tidal wave will go through without connecting. It's gonna be about a bubble if they can get that one in. Actually, we saw the Ignite use that as a good call. Oh! Oh, oh, it slipped down. The shield comes in. Uzi down low as well. Low health on both sides. There's no this kills though. There, there are wards behind Royal Club right now, and there's no teleport coming in from Achi. They don't Follow that aggression up. They had two people out of the fight here. No teleport up. He decides to stay bottom. He should get some damage on this turret, but there are reinforcements coming. Well, that's what you'd expect for him to push through, do the damage to the tower, but he did push through, but he didn't do the tower. He should have teleported. He did come into the fight. Uh, he should have teleported, yes. He should have teleported 100%. We just saw how strong BP is against two people. He just chunked them down to no HP in a matter of seconds. TP in from Mundo behind them, and suddenly you have a few kills. You can get your Baron. Oh, now it's Jay again. Yeah. BB's here too. BB is there. Cola though, and Corn both backing them up there, and Insect trying to get that one started. That's the second time in less than a minute that Jay's been caught somewhat a little bit far up there, and Insect has looked to try and get in and do the damage to him. And again, Insect just sat forward, ready to leap over the wall. There are three men there this time, though, and that is a bit of a dangerous scenario. He will actually leap away from it, but four-man push here in the mid lane. Mundo down bottom. He's got TP available. There's no teleport on Cola, so Ryze can't get involved in a fight if that were to kick off. 
You can tell TPA are starting to get frustrated without a clear avenue for them to end out this game. Not quite sure what to do. They're just going to run up against these inhibitor turrets. It's really hard to actually breach the inhibitor turrets because those are the ones with the walls that funnel you in to a shockwave, to a flash from Rise to start something out. If you press all the way up against the inhibitor turret, then that is the you know small opening there that Royal Club could use to force something. And now they actually do have some very deep wards, which means now they can start really dancing around this Baron here. Oh, he's oh, going to get the kill here. He's gonna go down there, he's wins to follow up. Archie does teleport finally into that fight, but they don't get it in for it. There's a flash into the jump, the slow lands onto Morning, but he instantly flashed as well. That's support for AD. Royal Club now have control. Let's see what the move they're gonna go to try and at least gain vision around Baron. It would be dangerous to start this one off, but they're going to rush in. But how dangerous? The behind, they've waited so long for this one. They take away the vision, and they're going to sit here with a trap ready and waiting. Will the Ooh. Taipei Assassins fall from this one? There's a pink ward there at the back. Royal Club know that they're there. There's the wall coming play. over Hard. the top. Taipei Assassins spot them. Very, very smart play here. So just before, even though there's all D-Bots, actually, never mind. Baron is started by Royal Club now. Starting it off, Wins is going to come over the top. Pink Ward in position. Archie will join Whoa. into the back. Baron going very, very low. Who's going to be able to get this one? He goes over it's to Royal guy. Club. Wins going to go low. Picked up in the end with the Uzi kill. Meanwhile, Cola going for morning. Gets that one. Ace in the hole with blocked by Archie. Exhaust onto Cola as well. Can't quite get the room prison down. That's going to be a two for nothing. And Royal Club gets in the Baron. TPA have control of the Baron pit for over 20 minutes. No Barons committed to. Royal Club have an opening of 20 seconds and they immediately commit to the Baron. They don't care if it's a smite fight. <laughs> Insect is able to win the smite fight and then they wrap around for the kills. Huge pickup for Royal Club. Simply just TPA didn't manage to push to victory, to be honest. I mean, it's not over yet, by no means. Let's see it again here. So, four members from Royal Club. Remember, BB is dead, so it's zero. He's running from base here, so no AD carry from one side, no support from the other one. Nice smite by Insect here, gets the Baron. And Jay's actually using a nice ulti to keep them in the Baron video. But Royal Club at this point, because BB is not here, he's the main damage dealer. It's just so much stronger in the fight. They can finish up here, get a few kills, get the Baron, and now they're in the driving seat. Could have been a lot more kills there at the end as well. That exhaust really stopping them pushing through. Jay and BB actually looking for a bit of a trap here onto Cola, who's pushing this bottom lane down. No vision in the river, so it's a risky push out. They've actually pinged that bottom tower, which means that Cola is going to be alone in this bottom lane. But do they want to try and take him on? This is a pretty strong ride. Scrying Orb is going to go down, but Cola with Baron buff on as well <laughs> is just too beefy for them. They don't want it. And it's also due to the mid lane here, if they went for the fight and it backfired, suddenly the mid tower would be gone. Maybe even the inhibitor here. So playing it safe, TBA, gonna go back to their own base, sit five members and try and wave it. Suddenly, Royal Club pushing up here, TBA has the wave clear. Now the thing to watch out for is the long range in the sun onto Uzi. Uzi does have a quick silver sash, so it's gonna have to be multiple CCs that they land on him to actually get that kill. But the first one, is going to have to proc it. Insane matchup here. And Insect is trying to get around the side of them. Gets it good slow off, gets it with the cleaver at the same time. We see Uzi, I mean, he's Shieldville right now. He's not really scared of tanking up a couple of hits from that tower. His Quicksilver Sash as well would stop him oh, from getting into any trouble here. His wind's coming around the back. Who are they going to go for? Oh! Yeah, they're going to go. Into the combo. They managed to get one kill. Archie going low. Zero is low as well. Insect though, going to be focused. He pops the ultimate. Will get the stealth. Jumps away as well. But Archie is chasing like a madman. But TPA, they're going straight up the mid lane. Royal Club need to react to this one. Uzi right now. It was doing the rave. Can be streak on now. It's way too late. Morning. And That's going to be a Oh my god, TPA moving through the base. Archie can tank this one all day long with that bone nail in there. Ace in the hole will come through. Big fat Mundo tanks that one up. They get the stun on Cola. The tower goes down. TPA here trying to turn it back around. What can they do? Insect off to the side, doesn't follow up. Again, they don't have that hard engage. They can't trap you and make and force a fight. Even oh. though they have Baron buff, 
Still another 15 or so seconds left on Corn, so it's going to be a pretty easy escape for oh, they need to get a tower. They yeah, get a the, tower. The recalling and Royal Club just pushing straight down this middle lane. We've already seen the Uzi not scared to tank up. Zero will take some damage here as the rest of the team comes around. Inner turret on the top lane goes down to minions. The inner turret in the middle lane is picked up by Royal oh. Club as well. That's done. Would have been another uh, clean pickup for TPA. Now, they did lose a turret to minions in that time, so those two were just traded turrets right there. But the play we saw just before here, this is the reason so many teams ban Lee Sin against wins, because he's so good at flanking around and setting up the entire fight, to be honest. He walked in there, managed to kick Korn back. He didn't try and flash the kick. That was not ours last either. Easy pick up for TPA, pushed it in. Open inhibitor now here. Beautiful play by Winston. Really showing why his Lee Sin is so, so respected. This is it's a hard be a trap <laughs> for TPA. Can they lure Royal Club into it? For now, you'd have to say, no way. Royal Club staying away from that one. And look at this. TPA actually coming to try and close in onto Insect. They've got a lot of vision on the top side of the map. They see both Uzi and Zero in the base, thanks to the ward that they left behind earlier on. Insect really trying to start these plays off, always flanking in from the side. Now he has the ball on him. We said it before, it's kind of obvious, even if you can't see him, when the entire team's running towards you and Insect isn't spotted, but they've at least forced TPA back for now. Really risky by BBA to not actually get a defensive item as his last item because TPA is playing a setup here where it's all about morning and BB to do the damage so you know who Royal Club is going to try and focus here and if Insect comes in there followed up by Corn of the Rune Prison then BB will die instantly because there's no defensive items he's going towards the play of the Rune King he's got to rely on Janna and the kickback from Lee Sin if he's not protected then everything is lost anyway they have to have him as a pure damage source here because Mundo's not going to be doing the damage Lee Sin's not going to be doing the damage late game they really need to squeeze it out of somewhere so so this is up to BB's late play. And, you know, this is the, what the team has relied on. Him in the late game with the big plays. And a wise man once said that offense is the best defense. We'll see if that actually <laughs> comes to be true here. As once again, Insect trying to get it right. Oh, oh. Taking half of Insect's health away. That was insane damage coming out of BB. And Insect realizing he can't keep doing that without the help of his team. And again, we see Royal Club. They're forced onto the side of the map. TPA going in the middle towards the inhib. This is actually going to be near, but the rest of Royal Club, they're running towards the base here. They want to maybe try and fight. Oh, speedy. Cola up. has flashed. They can oh, force that. Go go there it is. They're going towards Morning. Tidal away from the side. Morning going to go down. It's Kong that gets the kill. Can they get any more? Uzi trying to get in the damage up towards Archie. He's got his ultimate running. And we'll try and back away. It's a 60 second spawn time a year for Morning. And Royal Club have 30 seconds until the Baron comes up as well. They should be able to turn and get that. If not, an inhibitory of their own. Are you guys still with me? Yes, we are, we are good here. Job. I know it's a great game, but we got two analysts on this one. You've got to help me out here. But Royal Club pushing forward. Turrets being hammered away on. It looks like that's it for now. Baron is coming up in five. That's what Royal Club are going for. Thank they you. should, they should, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they should easily be able to get this one because as you said the discrepancy in uh, revive timers there is going to be way too much so another baron for royal club but they are also oh, going wins. to have to worry about getting back to defend the inhibitor here win join for the solo oh. steal no he's too late and he's going to die for it as well and that could be real bad news corn is actually recalling here so no push just yet for royal club right didn't even have to care about the inhibitor or their possible chance of tba pushing i mean we had BB doing red buff, and of course, Morning was still dead here, so it would have been a very risky play by TBA if they actually pushed up the mid lane. So another Baron here for Royal Club. And funny enough, go 20 minutes back, and suddenly, <laughs> oh, we were talking about how TBA, they were so far ahead here, just pushing up the lanes. Could they actually close out the game? The answer is no, they couldn't. And all of a sudden, Royal Club, heading goal, got a Baron buff. Thing is, Royal Club, they had to use that Rise Flash to get the catch onto Morning and it definitely paid off for them. They won't have the Flash for a long time, but now they have the Baron buff, and they need to make this Baron buff count. Let's see how well the Siege will go, because they do have to be careful about warding up behind them. They don't want Wins to pull off another one of those Lee Sin plays. That top Inatori has got a big wave pushing through. Royal Club gonna join into it. 
teleports available for Kohler as well, who's in the base right now, so he'll be able to join in. I think wisely here, the Taipei Assassins decide to leave it. Notice what Kohler is doing. He's just sitting and waiting. He has home guard already on his boots, so he wants to teleport in. That's going to be the engage. Not flashing in with Rice, just home guard, and you run straight in against TPA, land the rune prison, and then you can start a fight. Now he's actually moving out because they got to push all the way down to the base. And he has oh. to teleport, no home guard this time. Teleport coming into it, and Kohler will simply just join the party from this one. What's the next option for them? Waves in the top lane and in the mid lane, Sue are going to be bearing down onto those inhibitor turrets. But Royal Club want a go on this top inhibitor turret. There's the Kohler coming through. He's massive damage onto Uzi. There is a tidal wave together, disengaging. And the Royal Club <laughs> once again being shocked by the amount of damage coming their way have to back off. This is the point that's extremely exciting in the game, where everybody's getting to their max item builds. And I love the fact that not only has BB built full damage, but we have Uzi as well. So full damage, both AD carries. Which means, yes, if one of them is out of position, then everybody oh, yeah. has to spend all uh -huh. of the defensive ultimates to make sure their AD carry does not go down. That is the key to these fights, protecting the AD carries. Look down his bottom lane here, massive waving build up by Rosa, pushing in. As long as they keep TPA here, they might be able to move down and push in and get some damage in the bottom lane with this big wave coming. They're moving down now, but so is the rest of TPA. Look I at that graph there as well. TPA had such a control on this game for such a long time. And finally, Royal Club swinging it now in their favor. They're even pushing onto the steps in the bottom lane. Mid lane's pushed way up. Finally, that top lane has gone back a little bit for the Taipei Assassins to give them a bit of a breather on that front. There's a stun onto Korn. No follow-up just yet. Kohler actually going in. Bit of damage towards Archie. Once again, the Cullen being thrown out defensively, trying to keep them off the tower. Keep your eyes on the ball here. It's going to be about the Shockwave and about the Syndra stun. Who's going to hit the highest priority target first? Oh, actually, oh, Archie's going to be focused there a little bit. He's down to less than half HP. He might have to pop that ultimate here. Of course, has masses of regen even without that one. Insect hit with the Q, but Wind's not looking for the play just yet. The Baron buff is still on for Royal Club at this point. So they're feeling good, even if they take a bit of damage. Zero down to half. Gets hit with the stun at max range from morning. But it's so hard for Rose up to push in here when you're again Lucian and Syndra to do the They heal the Oh, fight. they're going to maybe there's a Monsu coming out. There is intake down to half HP. Oh, he comes through. It's not enough damage though. This could be the game right here. Jay is low. Cola trying to get in to finish them. God, Howling Gale will stop him chasing. But that is the inhibitor turret. Gonna be focused. They're all at half HP though. It's dangerous to stay. Korn gets hit by the stun. They do stay and they do get the tower. But their health is back with TPA. Are they going to go for this one? With BB being down, there's not a whole lot of threat here. Royal Club can easily get this inhibitor. You had to see, though, they waited so long. They had to wait for the full duration of the flash from Cola to come back up from last time they were able to make a move. But it does. He decides to take it, and they're immediately rewarded with an inhibitor going down. Finally, an inhibitor destroyed here. That is going to change the entire face of this game because they have pressure bottom. They can go up to top with K take down a quick turret. Cola goes right and he sees that open line for BB and takes it. The key damage source taken out from TPA. And it's just such a perfect setup because he flashes him with the rune prison just as the ulti from Uzi is actually fired to get the extra damage, kills him instantly. And it's all about BB in these late game team fights. If he's gone, there's no damage. And again, yeah, he needs to build a full damage, but it's just so risky and so hard for him in these fights. One mistake. And he goes down, the fight is lost by TPA. Less than two minutes until another Baron comes into play as Kola just wipes out that big wave on the top side. If we look down the farm, there's some ridiculous numbers on the scoreboard. I mean, we're 53 minutes into this one. There's over 500 CS on both of the AD carries at this stage. Insane game. As TPA once again. Oh, they're Ooh. setting up a trap. Royal Club don't know they're there. Insect Guardian Angel. There's a Howling Gale coming through, but everything missed. Everything missed there. Wind takes the ace in the hole. They're going to back off. Look at those shields on Uzi, too. Talk about defenses. He's got a support and a sort of support mid laner on his team, so he's feeling a bit safer. Bottom lane of pressure is being soaked up by Achi right now, and he doesn't have that far to walk to join this fight. 
Let's see if BB can stay safe this time around on the tower defense. He's cleared one super minion wave down there, so Archie can come up for a brief second. It's up again, though, for Royal Clip to force this. This time, though, no flash for Rise. Shockwave will be more important. We just have to say it. I mean, Royal Club has been able to outskill TP in this game with the comp, and now going in for the fight. Oh, he kicks it, but not right into the team. Wind's going low here. Cole are actually going to be the focus to get Archie. Monsoon goes down. I think Royal Club have done enough to get the tower. They do. Insect is in the middle of the team. They still have a shockwave. And Ace in the hole is used as well. And that is going to be an inhibitor number two going down. Insect the focus. He will leap away. And I think they've done enough to escape this one. TPA not going to chase. And Baron is spawning in about 10 seconds here. You have two inhibitors down. Go back, heal up, take the Baron, and go towards the top lane. Get the last tower down, get the last inhibitor as well. Things are looking very, very good for Royal Club here. Looking very strong with the late game comp. And it's been all about TPA not being able to close this game out. I mean, they had two options here. You fully bait the Baron early on. You put all your effort into denying vision in the jungle. In the top side of the jungle, you get a pick with the Syndra, which is perfect for it. Or you just keep pressuring every single lane like they did. BB was a lot stronger than Usien. They're committing to the teleport. Come in, they're going to go inside. Wind's going to move in. Oh, he doesn't get it. It's Royal Club. They get the barrel, but there is a Kuli going through. They're smashing them in the back of the barrel pit. But there's the shockwave. wave. It gets Jay. Two for one up until now. But it's a double for Uzi. Inside gets another one. This is going to be an ace in the hole. Doesn't quite get them the ace, though, in the end. Archie's going to run away, and it leaves. Two versus one left on the map. Baron going over to Royal Club. Insect's not going to be able to get a kill there, but another insane fight. And with Uzi still up, that means they can still destroy some buildings here. This might even be the game it will. for Royal Club. They can press in. They've got super minions, top turrets under pressure. They're going to try and end it. Archie got to be the boss here with that big tanky Mundo. Oh, never and he spawned. hauled them away from it. Super Minions coming in. Inhib in the bottom lane is going to go down once again. His next teammate is arriving in 25 seconds time here. He will have two of them coming up pretty quick, but Royal Club are focusing in on towards those turrets. There is the first one going down. Second one will be shredded as well. Archie will actually fall in the end with all those Minions and the two men left alive. And Royal Club, after 56 and a half minutes, win their first game here at Worlds. Such a great comeback here by Royal. And it's funny how when we see Royal normally play in the LPL, they're not really a team to come back once they do fall behind. But this time around, a bit of a different comp. Cola and Rise for the first time, at least from the first time I remember. And they just managed to keep defending. Baron never went in favor of TPA. Every single time they tried to start it, Zero was there, awarded it, the rest of t uh, rest of Royal Club was there to stop the potential Baron and just sat and farmed and farmed and farmed. Then we got to late game team fights, they had a stronger late game comp and it paid off. Yeah, TPA did a great job of getting their early and mid game control of the game, but they didn't do much with their control of the game and eventually they fell to the curse of the two damage source composition, only bringing AD carry and AP carry really for the late game damage fall out and they just couldn't hang. Going by the broadcast, we've really expected a 